including the companies he vandalized in order to document animal abuses. And we think somebody wants to kill him before he gets to trial. This flight affords whoever that killer is the best opportunity, because previous to this, he was in deep cover underground. After this, he's going to be in extreme protective custody. It's our job to back up the FBI agents escorting him to trial and make sure he gets there. OK? I was just asking why we have to fly, Coach. He could have stopped me. It had to be said anyway. Uh, Next in line. Oh, no, you're kidding. No, We're flying Stratus Airlines? It's a perfectly fine airline. If you have a death wish, <gasps> these guys have a frequent near-miss program. They offer complimentary champagne during free falls. Talk about a hard landing. Last one off the plane has to clean up the debris. You know that motto, we love to fly and it shows? Well, their motto is, we're learning to fly and it shows. These guys hand out last will declarations with a pre-flight snack. Are you rather developing a stand-up act or are you afraid to fly? I am not afraid to fly. You've been complaining about this assignment the whole way here. What exactly is wrong? Is it sitting so long in a plane that you develop a blood clot in your legs that can travel to your lungs and suffocate you? Is it being in a complicated piece of machinery that was largely constructed by dozens of contractors who were the lowest bidders? Is it a window breaking in the pressurized cabin causing you to get sucked out and fall five miles to Earth? It wasn't. Where are Cassie and Dee? TikTok people in the airline industry being laid is about as fashionable as those shoes. James Green must be major trouble to someone. We've been working on our close quarters defensive drills around the clock. I know, we better see some action. I, mean, I feel ready enough to take on six ninjas, the rock, and a platoon of Navy SEALs. Can I help you with that, ma'am? Back off, Blondie. The one thing we didn't train for. There are three career criminals with one shot at freedom. Now they're working for the feds who put them away. These are the women of She Spies. Bad girls gone good. these bandages are necessary? Definitely, it's only one bandage. It's just really, really long. <laughs> <clears throat> I understand. My sense of humor is a tad esoteric for you non-medical personnel. I, I can't see anything. Good. You won't know who to sue. <laughs> there I go again. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, the fact is, an interorbital pressure is causing multiple fractures in your nose, cheek, and eye socket. The entire area needs to be protected in exactly this way. I'm sure once the bandages come off, you'll look absolutely perfect again. Yes, well, nothing quite as valuable as the medical opinion of a flight attendant. Here, take one. No, take four. Every couple of hours, huh? We're so lucky you just happened to be standing by when this happened. What kind of doctor did you say you were again? The kind that doesn't need a lousy piece of paper from a so-called institution of higher learning to prove that he's a doctor. People are always going on about doing things the right way. Well, let me tell you something, huh? College degrees, medical associations, actual doctoring experience are all highly overrated notions. What exactly did I just swallow? Ah, horse tranquilizers. Uh, uh, people tend to need them when they find that I'm not legal. <laughs> uh, well, I got to go now. Uh, uh, the pill works faster, so that anger will be gone in a flash. Now, don't remove those bandages for 24 hours. You risk the damage to the bones, I would make facial reconstruction surgery a virtual impossibility. <laughs> I tell you. We heard what happened. Are you okay? If I okay, you mean able to breathe through my nose hole? Okay, guess Cassie's out of commission. We can't go now. I'll just go grab the cab and meet you back at the house. Bye. No, 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 no. We have to get on the plane, Shane. Not on the bus, Russ. You're not going in a cab, not on a bus, not on a bike. Look, whoever's trying to kill this guy has to do it on this flight. We have no choice. We have to get on the plane and we have to figure out who's trying to murder him. It was Colonel Mustard in the dining room with a wrench. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Ooh, I think those pills are kicking to start in. What's happening? What's wrong with her? Fake doctor, horse tranquilizers. He kind of had to be there. Do you know Bill Gates has more money than Ecuador? But Ecuador has more Ecuadorians in it, so there, there's that. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Mm. Please sit down. Uh, uh. This can't be happening. The plane is about to board. You're Jack, right? It's true. When you're blind, all your other senses become heightened. 
You know, I could drive this thing right now perfectly just by listening. Ow! Jack, clearly she has no condition to do this. Oh. Fine, then she'll be the passenger and you'll take her place. Uh, no, you cannot be serious. Clearly, I'm serious. As of this moment, you are officially a flight attendant. I break out in hives when I see pictures of airplanes. How am I supposed to be a flight attendant? Just keep thinking about why we're here. We are trying to save a man who spent his whole life rescuing poor little defenseless animals. That should be enough to set aside your fears. Ah! Is that the door? <sighs> okay, fine. Look, here's a list of all the suspects I came up with. Already? Good for you. Chubby guy with a cigarette. Mm. Midway through the flight, gets a Jones for a smoke. Goes into the bathroom, disables the smoke detector, puts out the cigarette into the trash can filled with paper towels. Fire on board, flaming death. Chatty Jennifer Garner wanna be with fake nails and a bad dye job. Can't stand the thought of being apart from her boyfriend. Has to make an in-flight phone call on her cell phone. Interferes with the plane's avionics. They short circuit, sparks everywhere. Flaming death. English butler. A natural attachment to the mother country compels him to order the plane back to England. Throws us off course to the north. A flock of Canadian geese get sucked into the engines. Let me guess. Flaming death? Oh, no. The engines give out. We plummet 30,000 feet to the ground. Then, flaming death. OK. Now, um, any thoughts on the suspects we're actually here to stop? Dee, please. One crisis at a time. The question is, given today's security restraints, how do you kill someone on a plane? You're going to kill someone on a plane? No, 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 that's not what I know. This, this isn't necessary. I mean, she's just a little bit. It's a pill for the horse. Quiet! He's got nail clippers! I have to clip condition. See, see! He's hiding something! No, no, oh, oh. Oh. You two behave, Bill. Ready to board, are you okay? I'm just the tiniest bit afraid. Not really. My uncle Earl always used to say, when your time is up, your time is up. Is he still alive? No. He got hit by a piece of Skylab. It was a one in a billion shot. Well, the point being, it can happen anytime and any place. You could be playing golf and be eaten by a stray alligator. You could get your head cut off in a collision with a glass and mirror truck. You could pass out in a field and be chewed up by a wheat thrashing machine. Death isn't on this airplane any more than it's in every corner of your life. So cheer up, okay? Oh, here they come. The rude, the loud, the moronic masses. Unclean, uncouth, and completely unable to handle four perfectly simple hours in the air without drowning themselves in little bottles of this makes me the boss of everyone. Mm. That's Todd. It's nice to let about. I'm sure the unbearable torture and pain he cow went through was worth it. Your hair looks very clean. Do you use shampoo? Uh, yes, I do. You must be very proud, using a product that's inhumanely tested on furry little kittens. May I compliment you on the natural fibers in your shoes and your complete lack of any animal test and makeup? Sure, go ahead. Oh, right, that was it. Thank you. I'm very careful about the kinds of things I let touch my skin. Would my lips pass your test? Only if there were no animals harmed in their development. Well, if you don't count Valerie Dearborn in ninth grade homeroom. Now you know the real reason we have air sickness bags. It's getting full, Didi. The plane's getting heavier. 600 tons into the sky, just magically floating on air. Everything's gonna be fine, I promise. There's absolutely nothing to worry about. Excuse me, miss. I ordered the lost sodium meal. Could you make sure that I get it? I'm in 13H. The thing is, I, I always order it, but I never get it. And I don't like to complain. <laughs> Are you okay, sir? Let's put it this way. Some nice men in airport security found the class ring I'd lost. Uh, excuse me, I believe you're in my seat. Oh, well then, aren't you the one with all the answers? I'm glad you're there. Wait, wait, don't go! 
Close door. I'm uh, starting school in Minnesota. Can't miss my first day. Go ahead. Full flight. The killer could be any one of a number of people, though a small amount of preliminary surveillance has begun to narrow the field. Our most likely candidates, the huffy Englishwoman. The bearded man who's watching everything just a bit too closely. The college student who almost missed the flight. Todd, who's just a little too cliche to be trusted. And whoever belongs to the hand that seems to be hiding a syringe in his overnight bag. Hey, turn on the lights, I'm reading here. So, the journey begins, and the question needs to be answered before any damage is done. On a plane filled with potential murderers, who poses the greatest threat to James Green? What's right of the peanuts? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, our passenger isn't herself today. She's on medication. Uh, but I promise you, you'll be careful to keep an eye on her for the rest of the flight. Ah! Oh, my God. Mommy, Mommy, I told you people don't stay buried. Probably horribly disfigured under those bushes. You will never believe you're sitting in 48E. The actor from Chips. Eric Estrada. No. Larry Wilcox. No. Robert Pine. No. Lou Saunders. No. Lou Wagner. No. Michael Dorn. No. Man in checkered shirt. From the third season. Oh, the guy Punch talks off the ledge. He's having marital problems. Honey, <laughs> it's hard to be impressed after a 14-hour flight from Sydney with three of the Backstreet Boys. The four of us spending the entire time eating and heaving and heaving and eating. Mm, motion uh, sickness. Now. Nah. Just passing time. How are you feeling? Better now. I'm Dee Dee. James Green. What can I get you, James? Your phone number? First things first. How about a soda and some goldfish? Crackers. Goldfish crackers. Water, please, but uh, no crackers. Stratus Airlines uses K Low brand, which contains traces of omega-3 fats that come from brutally harvested salmon. I see. One salmon-free water coming up. Stress there, I'd like to welcome you aboard flight 221, non-stop service to Istanbul. <laughs> Kidding, to Minneapolis. I love when the flight attendants make jokes with the passengers. At this moment, please have your seats in the full upright positions, your trays stowed, and your seatbelts fastened. If you have any questions about how to fasten your seatbelts, you really should get out more. In the unlikely event the cabin loses pressure, oxygen masks will drop down from the overhead area. Place the mask over your nose and mouth and breathe normally. I've always wondered how you breathe normally when your cabin's just lost all its air pressure. So you have my permission to breathe in a rapid and concerned manner if you want to. And finally, no smoking, no tampering with the smoke alarms in the restrooms, and anyone who breaks the rules will be asked to leave the plane immediately. Enjoy your flight. Excuse me. Hi, um, there's a, a whole empty row back there. I was wondering if I could move, get away from this. I'm sorry. That's against FAA regulations. What regulation? Come on, I do it all the time. Regulation 657284, the unauthorized changing of seats on an Ellie to Minneapolis-based flight flying eastbound on a Thursday. Thank you for understanding. Shane, you can let go now. Shane, I can't feel my arm. Shane, if you let me get to a knife, you can have my arm. Oh. I'm so sorry, Dee Dee. My brain is giving the signal to my hand, but my hand is giving the bird to my brain. Look, Shane, maybe if we understood exactly what you were afraid of, we'd be able to deal with it better, okay? The recently reported use of non-regulation replacement parts and engine maintenance, the high turnover and medical problems in the overstressed world of air traffic controllers, the dangerous wake turbulence from another aircraft and its ability to send us into an irreversible tailspin. Just um, add those to the list. Excuse me, Stu. Seems there's a breakdown in customer relations. When the Jeff booked this flight, he was told first class was full. Right before takeoff, 
The Jeff did a quick recon past the curtain. There's an open seat. The Jeff now demands an upgrade. <laughs> well, the Shane cannot authorize that, sir. Uh, but between you and me, first class isn't really what it's cracked up to be. It's actually quite stuffy in there. <laughs> The Jeff sees your point. Um, now, if you'll just take your seat, sir. Perhaps you don't know who the Jeff is. All those T-shirts that say stupid and I'm with stupid? The Jeff's company prints every last one of those in 16 different languages. Oh. Huh? Enough said? Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. We're cruising at an altitude of 32,000 feet and... Oh, my God! Oh. <laughs> Sorry, spilled my coffee. Well, the Jeff now likes it in coach. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, careful, sir. Articles in the overhead compartment can shift during the flight. Oh. Jack? Are you all right? Jack! Uh, it's the crackers. I'm allergic. There must be trace amounts of omega-3 fats in them. Does everyone know about that? Don't worry about me. <clears throat> you, you focus on green. Oh, uh, if anything does happen to me, Promise to delete a file on my computer. Alyssa Milano's complete schedule and whereabouts. It's you know, it's a joke title. I keep my tax records there, and it has absolutely nothing to do with that whole restraining order thing. <laughs> Good news. There's a psychic on board this plane. And uh, you think a psychic would get on board the plane if she knew there was going to be an accident? Um, no. Very good point. Huh? Wait a minute, why, why, why is she flying coach? Because it's cheaper. Exactly. She can't afford to fly first class. Meaning? Meaning she's not a very good psychic. Because? If she was a good psychic, she would have won the lotto. Oh, God, we're doomed to flaming death. Shane, listen to me. There isn't going to be any flaming death. We're going to have a smooth, safe flight. Fasten your seatbelts, people. We're headed into the mother of all storms. I'm just going to go check on the coffee. <laughs> My, my. Little Miss Flight Attendant have something more sinister on her mind than serving lousy coffee and meeting a rich husband? You're the one with the gun on a plane. I'm a federal sky marshal. I'm working this flight. Who are you and what's your interest in a passenger in 14B? You're Raul Greenberg and you're a CPA? No, that's my other assignment. You're an ex-con who works for a clandestine government organization that's trying to rid the world of evildoers? <laughs> Con who works for a clandestine government organization trying to rid the world of evil doers. I wonder if there's anyone in the head. I am having enough trouble without getting a gun stuck in my back. Don't, 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 don't kill me, please. My name is Bob. Like in for apples? I usually sell patio furniture, but it's a slow time of year. They were looking for sky marshals, and I answered an ad. I've never arrested anyone. I I've never even fired a gun. Just between you and me. I don't think I'd know what to do if a real criminal came along. Your tax dollars at work. Is there something I can get you? Well, I hope so, dear. I'm concerned I won't be able to finish knitting my blanket before I freeze to death on this flying icebox. Let me see if I can find you something in the overhead compartment. Here's your drink, sir. Be back. Gotta go. Don't drink that. Why not? Why not? Yes, why not? Why not what? Why not drink that? Why not drink what? Why not drink that? Why not drink that? Yes, why not drink that? Why not drink what? Why not drink that? This isn't very good banter, is it? Not really. Maybe we should move on. Why don't you ask me your question again? Sure. Why shouldn't I drink that? Drink what? I'm kidding. The truth is, I'm just stalling until I can think of an answer. Excuse me? I'm a school teacher, and these are your possible answers. A, I'm working undercover and someone may be trying to kill you. B, I think you're cute and want to hold something you've touched. C, your glass doesn't look clean. Your glass doesn't look clean. Helping a government agent maintain her cover is one of the unsung joys of teaching. I'm sorry I suspected you, but you have been acting a little strangely. Afraid to fly, huh? Well, what is it? Is it the proximity of all those mountaintops as we fly low to avoid cloud cover? The idea that when we fly over cities, we're sharing our airspace with dozens of other incredibly fast-moving huge chunks of steel with no better brakes than us? Or knowing that we're like a gigantic lightning rod for every electrical storm within a hundred miles? Can we all just stop trying to guess now? 
Jack, are you okay? Jack, this is Bob, the Sky Marshal. Bob, this is Jack, my boss. <laughs> Seems like a nice man. <laughs> well, now that I know we're on the same team, I can tell you what it is I bet on the lookout for. But this is just between me and you. Strictly confidential. It's on a need-to-know basis. Don't write it down. Don't email it. If you have to talk about it on the phone, for God's sakes, use a secured line. Best case scenario, use an encrypted algorithm code for any communications. There's going to be a... Oh, but th 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 you might want to wait until these seven people here waiting for the bathroom aren't listening. <laughs> we were tipped off that there's going to be an attempt to free the animal rights guy. Oh, great. Somebody's trying to kill him and somebody's trying to free him. Why can't the two of them just go at it with each other and leave us out of it? That might not be best for everyone involved. That was a rhetorical question. Oh. Everything okay up here? There's another plot brewing for James Green. Don't worry, she's with me. Is anyone here a flight attendant? Because I didn't get my nuts. Who's he? Sky Marshal. Sort of. He just told me that there's someone on board this plane planning to free Green. Oh, kill him. Free him. Why can't they just go out with each other and leave us out of it? That might not be best for everyone involved. Rhetorical too, right? Listen, let's just get a list of all the passengers who ordered vegan meals. Whoever's trying to free him must be a member of ALF and they would never eat another living thing. Unless, for the good of the cause, he or she actually ordered a meat, fish, or chicken meal to throw suspicion off of them, in which case we should get a list of those passengers as well. Wouldn't that be everyone? Unless, for the good of the cause, he or she actually skipped the meal entirely. Do you you let's just start with my plan first. Oh, pardon me, Miss Cleaner Than Thou Drinking Glass Monitor. What's that all about? Ah, uh, another group to consider. In-flight employees. I saw him trying to give Green a drink when it wasn't even his area. I intercepted it just in time. Don't stare at the bad man, Robbie. Ever hear the Dre's eye irritation test, Robbie? Scientists purposely irritate the eyes of rabbits, then record the damage over 7 to 18 days. So every time your mommy puts on eyeliner, which she apparently does by the truckload, she's responsible for the torture of thousands of cute little bunnies. Bunny killer! Bunny killer! Listen here, Trotsky. Keep your furry love opinion to yourself. Recent stem cell research on mice show promising results in muscular dystrophy. While both sides have valid points of view, the producers of She Spies wish to state that we take no stand whatsoever on the issue of animal testing as we lack the moral fiber to take a strong position on anything at all. Ma'am, you're blocking the aisle. Guess all's forgiven, huh? It's crazy weather. Reminds the Jeff of that classic Twilight Zone where our greatest American actor, William Shatner, looked out the window and saw the monster on the wing trying to crash the plane. Tonight's movie is Passenger 57, the non-stop and oh-so-exciting story of a federal prisoner being escorted to trial on a commercial flight. But others on board have no intention of said prisoner ever reaching his destination. <laughs> right, like that could ever happen. <laughs> I'm feeling a little better. I think, I think the worst is over. Oh, whoa. Oh. Weird. This looks just like the airplane I was on before. Yeah. All right. Here's a list of all the passengers who had vegan meals and their seat assignments. Four meals. Green had one. The college student Jessica and the Jeff. Oh. Everyone back to their seats, please. Thank you. Thank you. Who's ever in there? Are you all right? I'm fine. Mr. Green? What happened? Well, about an hour ago, I had the curry and beans. As I understand, the digestive system, once in the stomach, enzymes begin to Can break you down. Can just skip ahead to the part about how the syringe got stuck in the bathroom door? There's a syringe stuck in the bathroom door? Someone on this plane is trying to kill me. Me, a moron. Where were you? 
was having a snack. You know, as a sky marshal, I get first crack at the Sunday card. The killer must have lunged a green with the syringe, but he shut the door just before it hit. All right, all right. Well, we'll take the prints off of this with our mobile infrared scanner, hotwire an in-flight phone, the rigamotum, and we'll fax the prints to the agency. They'll cross-check them with six national data banks and Interpol. And with any luck, we just might find out who this belongs to. Hey, that's mine. <clears throat> what are you doing with the syringe on the plane? Well, the Jeff's at risk for chronic fatigue syndrome. That's why he takes shots of vitamin B12. He also works out on a regular basis. <clears throat> uh, where did the Jeff keep the needle? In his bag, stowed safely in the overhead compartment. You are captain here. That mother of all storms turned out to be mustard on my radar. <laughs> However, because of an incident in the cabin, new FAA regulations require us to return to Los Angeles. Oh, oh no way. We have to figure out who did this before we land. All right, well, we'll just ask the passengers. 50 people must have seen what happened. I think it was a man. I think it was a woman. I think it was a child. I think it was a dog. It was a Sergeant Pepper mod in a multicolored waistcoat. He had a big nose. A fat butt. Pecs to die for. <laughs> he was tall and thin. He was kind of a wiener. She was short and squat and doesn't wax. He, she was a hermaphrodite and had a tattoo on his, her, right arm that misspelled superfluous. I'd like to use one of my lifelines and call First Lady Rosalind Carter. So, basically, we're back to the same four suspects. Where's the college student? I thought I told you you couldn't sit there. Can't you find a place in your heart for a poor college student? What school do you go to? Uh, University of Minnesota. The Beavers? Mm -hmm. I'm a pre-law major. Really? I know, just what we need, more lawyers. <laughs> I was being sarcastic. Are you sure you weren't being ironic? You know, I always get those two confused. Actually, you're both right. Ironic is an acceptable synonym for sarcastic. Also acceptable are facetious, sardonic, and mocking. I know, I'm a giver. Okay, you can stay here, but if you get caught, we never have this conversation. What conversation? Jack, you've been in there forever. How are you feeling? Tip top. Nice. Nice. I think I might know who our killer is. Remember the guy in 11D? He snuck up to the seat near Mr. Green even after I told him not to. And then he told me he went to the University of Minnesota, and I said the Beavers, and he said yeah. And they let him wander the streets where our children play. No, you don't understand. The University of Minnesota calls our team the Gophers. <laughs> I never used to play the violin. Also, the Jeff syringe was stowed in the overhead compartment right above the college student's seat. Let's keep an eye on him. Definitely worth mentioning. Pilot and cold pilot are all cold. <laughs> what do you think, Did I call it or what? Whee! Not to worry, I'm going to save us. It's true, I've never flown a plane before, and I'm hopped up on illegal medication prescribed by a fake doctor. My eyes are completely covered in bandages, but I do own Airport 75 and 77 on DVD. Jack? That's the airport in front of us. Isn't that the point? But the runway's over there! Oh. Is that the ocean right there? Oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. We're making our final approach into the Los Angeles area. Wow. 
all these pills give you quite the imagination. Drinks. because my jurisdiction ends right here. Not over there, or over there, but right here. Bye-bye. Thank you for flying Stratus Airlines. Other than ending up in the same place you started, we hope you enjoyed the flight. Have a pleasant evening, and please depart in a safe and orderly fashion. Ah! Oh, my God. Mr. Green? Mr. Green? Wake up. Oh, he's alive. All three are passed out cold. That's my fault. I was trying to help. I'm a, I'm a great admirer of Mr. Green's work. I myself just recently freed four ground squirrels from a lab in Arizona. I knew someone was trying to kill him, so I drugged the agent's drinks so then I could sneak him out the back of the airplane. He must have had a sip of one of theirs. I don't know what to do now. You could crumple to the floor in a heap. Back here, behind the jet. Come on. Who are you and what do you want? James Green has become a major obstacle to the advancement of science. It's time we put him to sleep. We? Hello. We are from Pota, dear. Pota? P-U-T-A. People for the useful testing of animals. Green is ruining years of important work, so we came here in disguise to kill him. <sighs> Mine's stuck. But you get the point. God, I hate to fly. I'm nothing without my gun. We should run! I love it when the pills wear off just in time for the fight. Jack, stay with Mr. Green. And they're off. Leather jacket brings out to an early lead. Followed on the outside by a blue shirt. And Navy Force Coach stumbles out of the gate. for conspiracy to commit murder. And for stealing two bags of unauthorized airline peanuts. I just came to Citizen. I love action quips. A final joke. I heard the sound of scuffles. Does anybody here need a doctor?
Sadly, key footage of tonight's episode of She Spies was lost in a tragic photo lab accident. As a result, we've used a number of seamlessly woven in recreations barely noticeable to the naked eye. See if you can pick them out. All right, tell me again why we have to do this. James Green, the leader of the Animal Liberation Faction, otherwise known as ALF, has finally been captured by the feds and has been taken to trial. He has a number of enemies, including the companies he vandalized in order to document animal abuses. And we think somebody wants to kill him before he gets to trial. This flight affords whoever that killer is the best opportunity, because previous to this, he was in deep cover underground. After this, he's going to be in extreme protective custody. It's our job to back up the FBI agents escorting him to trial and make sure he gets there. OK? I was just asking why we have to fly coach. He could have stopped me. It had to be said anyway. Uh, Next in line. Oh, no, you're kidding. You? We're flying Stratus Airlines? It's a perfectly fine airline. If you have a death wish, <gasps> these guys have a frequent near-miss program. They offer complimentary champagne during free falls. Talk about a hard landing. Last one off the plane has to clean up the debris. You know that motto we love to fly and it shows? Well, their motto is we're learning to fly and it shows. These guys hand out last will declarations with a pre-flight snack. You're either developing a stand-up act or you're afraid to fly. I am not afraid to fly. You've been complaining about this assignment the whole way here. What exactly is wrong? Is it sitting so long in a plane that you develop a blood clot in your legs that can travel to your lungs and suffocate you? Is it being in a complicated piece of machinery that was largely constructed by dozens of contractors who were the lowest bidders? Is it a window breaking in the pressurized cabin causing you to get sucked out and fall five miles to Earth? It wasn't. Where are Cassie and Dee Dee? Mm. TikTok people in the airline industry being late is about as fashionable as those shoes. James Green must be major trouble to someone. We've been working on our close quarters defensive drills around the clock. I know, we better see some action. I mean, I feel ready enough to take on six ninjas, the rock, and a platoon of Navy SEALs. Can I help you with that, ma'am? Back off, Blondie. The one thing we didn't train for. There are three career criminals with one shot at freedom. Now they're working for the feds who put them away. These are the women of She Spies. Bad girls gone good. these bandages are necessary? Definitely, it's only one bandage. It's just really, really long. <laughs> <clears throat> I understand. My sense of humor is a tad esoteric for you non-medical personnel. I, I can't see anything. Good. You won't know who to sue. <laughs> there I go again. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, the fact is, an interorbital pressure is causing multiple fractures in your nose, cheek, and eye socket. The entire area needs to be protected in exactly this way. I'm sure once the bandages come off, you'll look absolutely perfect again. Yes, well, nothing quite as valuable as the medical opinion of a flight attendant. Here, take one. No, take four. Every couple of hours, huh? We're so lucky you just happened to be standing by when this happened. What kind of doctor did you say you were again? The kind that doesn't need a lousy piece of paper from a so-called institution of higher learning to prove that he's a doctor. People are always going on about doing things the right way. Well, let me tell you something. Huh? College degrees, medical associations, actual doctoring experience are all highly overrated notions. What exactly did I just swallow? Ah, horse tranquilizers. Uh, uh, people tend to need them when they find out I'm not legal. <laughs> uh, well, I got to go now. Uh, uh, the pill works faster, so that anger will be gone in a flash. Now, don't remove those bandages for 24 hours. You risk the damage to the bones that would make facial reconstruction surgery a virtual impossibility. <laughs> tell you. We heard what happened. Are you okay? If I okay, you mean able to breathe through my nose hole? Okay, guess Cassie's out of commission and we can't go now. I'll just go grab the cab and meet you back at the house. Bye. No, 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 no. We have to get on the plane, Shane. Not on the bus, Russ. You're not going in a cab, not on a bus, not on a bike. Look, whoever's trying to kill this guy has to do it on this flight. We have no choice. We have to get on a plane and we have to figure out who's trying to murder him. It was Colonel Mustard in the dining room with a wrench. <laughs> Ooh. 
Ooh, I think those pills are kicking to start in. What's happening? What's wrong with her? Fake doctor, horse tranquilizers. You kind of had to be there. Do you know Bill Gates has more money than Ecuador? But Ecuador has more Ecuadorians in it, so then there's that. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. Please sit down. Uh -huh. <sighs> uh. This can't be happening. The plane is about to board. You're Jack, right? It's true. When you're blind, all your other senses become heightened. You know, I could drive this thing right now perfectly just by listening. Ow! Jack, clearly she has no condition to do this. Oh. Fine, then she'll be the passenger and you'll take her place. No, you cannot be serious. Clearly, I'm serious. As of this moment, you are officially a flight attendant. I break out in hives when I see pictures of airplanes. How am I supposed to be a flight attendant? Just keep thinking about why we're here. We are trying to save a man who spent his whole life rescuing poor little defenseless animals. That should be enough to set aside your fears. Ah! Is that the door? <sighs> okay, fine, look. Here's a list of all the suspects I came up with. Already? Good for you. Chubby guy with a cigarette. Hmm. Midway through the flight, gets a Jones for a smoke. Goes into the bathroom, disables the smoke detector, puts out the cigarette into the trash can filled with paper towels. Fire on board. Flaming death. Chatty Jennifer Garner wanna be with fake nails and a bad dye job. Can't stand the thought of being apart from her boyfriend. Has to make an in-flight phone call on her cell phone. Interferes with the plane's avionics. They short circuit, sparks everywhere. Flaming death. English butler. A natural attachment to the mother country compels him to order the plane back to England. Throws us off course to the north. A flock of Canadian geese gets sucked into the engines. Let me guess, flaming death? Oh no. The engines give out. We plummet 30,000 feet to the ground then. Flaming death. Okay. Now, um, any thoughts on the suspects we're actually here to stop? Dee, please. One crisis at a time.